Hello CIS 11. In this video, I'm going to talk about lab 5 as we are not going to meet um, on Thursday on Zoom. So I want to explain how to work on lab 5. So in lab 5, we are to create a program that's going to receive the user input. The user is going to key in numbers between 0 through 6. And as they press the number, it will display the appropriate day. So if the user input 0, the console is going to show Sunday. If the user input 1, the console is going to show Monday and so forth. So if the user put in 6, then the console would display Saturday. So the input, we're going to record the user input between 0 and 6. And we are going to output the corresponding day of the week based on the input. Now we need to have the program output a string. Please enter the number. And we would take that input and be able to convert it from ASCII. So now notice that the string is going to be null terminated. And for LC3, it's going to have one character per memory location that is stored. And each location is 16-bit wide. So when you're using a string like this one, please enter a number. The P is at <coughs> the first location in that array, so the first address. And the subsequent address will be the subsequent letter. And at the end, we would have a null termination. So in the case of if we have a, a string ABC, ABC would take up three character plus a null terminated position. So that's going to be four memory location that it needs to be allocated. And each one would be 16 bits. So when you look at it, let's say that if the Sunday is used for the string, and if the S is at 31, hex 3100, U is going to be following at 3101, N, D, A, Y, and then the null termination would be at 3106. So in this case, we have six character with the null terminate, terminated character that would be a total of seven. Now, when we output the string, when you're using the put, it's going to use trap 22. So vector 22 for trap. And it's when we do a put, that's going to rely on register 0 to be able to output the, the actual string. So we need to tie the string to the label. So in this example, ABCLBL, ABC label is going to be declared with the string ABC. And in order to output that string, we simply do an LEA R0 and the label, and it's going to show that string. So the put command, it, it calls for the system trap routine, which outputs null terminated string address of its first character. And then it's going to be found in register 0. So with the first character in this example that will be the A, that address for the A would then be loaded into register 0. Now when you use get C to record an input and get C uses track vector 20 it's going to read a single character from the keyboard, place it, it, place its ASCII value to the register 0. Now, when you working with ASCII, make sure you reference the ASCII table so you can see the offset for the ASCII so that way you can convert it. Now, the eighth most significant bits of the register are clear. There's no echo in the read, meaning that it's not going to show on screen. So when you use a get C, 
it's just going to record the input. It will not display what the user has input on console. And so in our exercise, we're going to ask the user to input 0 through 6 and ask the user input. It would have relevant days for the output. Now to do the ASCII conversion, after we have the input from the user, which is 0 through 6, then we are going to add, we are going to copy register 0 to register 3 because we might be able to use register 0 for other input or other things. So once we copy it to register 3 in this example, then we want to add negative decimal 16 three times to subtract 48. Why are we subtracting 48? So when you're looking at an ASCII table like this one, the number 0 in ASCII is, is 48 in a distance of the decimal. So that means that it's offset by 48. So when we're looking at decimal 48, that's going to be equivalent to 0. So when the user inputs 0, we need to subtract 48 to ASCII convert it. So in our exercise, as the user input in the number, we need to subtract 48 in order to convert it. So that way, R3 would then contain the actual value. Now. Below, on page 2 of your lab, it explains why we need to use the three instructions to subtract 48 as the maximum possible value of the immediate operand can only be within 5 bits. So if we subtract 48, that will be larger than 5 bits, so it would not be able to handle it in one instruction line so what we need to do is we need to do it three times and three times 16 would give you 48. So in the two complement format when we use negative 16 that's the most that we can subtract using the add instruction because negative 16 would fill up the five bits so we have to do it three times in order to subtract 48. So if the user press a number 5, that 5 is the ASCII value. And it, we need to convert that 5 by taking that 5, subtract 48. And once we subtract it, then we would get the actual value that will be stored into register 3. So this gives you a little bit of the layout on how you should use LC3 instruction to do the conversion from ASCII. Then on the bottom, we need to declare the days of the week as strings. So when we define the day of the week, they must have the same length, meaning that when you set it up, you must align the quotation mark in the same position for each one of them because it's going to use the character as address locate or the address the first address location for that string to be able to access the first character and the subsequent character so if you don't align it with the appropriate spacing and the length what will happen is it's going to cut off your the string when it outputs and wednesday has the largest string which has nine characters so that means that it's going to occupy 10 locations in the memory because we would have nine character plus the null termination terminated string so it's that's going to be one character for the null so that will be 10 locations in memory now when we look at how we would be able to access that it tells you here that if the numerical code for the day is i, 
the value of the range 0 to 6, the address of the corresponding day formula will be the address of the days plus i times 10. So the address of the day is the address of the label called days. And we declare that here. That's the days label. And that will be the beginning address of the string Sunday. Then since LC3 does not provide multiplication, one has to implement it. So what we need to do is we need to be able to loop it and we would add it so many times in order to represent the multiplication. Since we have we know that it's going to be multiplying by 10, what we need to do is we need to add the 10 and we would decrement, we would have a decrement in the loop as we loop through each one. It's going to count down. And after each time we're going to loop it back again. So it's going to go back to the loop portion to go to the next round and the next round and the next round after that and we continue to add as it loops through and we need to do it 10 times so that's how we would be able to implement the multiplication of 10 using the loop the next is the requirement for the lab you are going to look at the problem statement and the information. We need to write out the pseudocode that would represent the algorithm of the program. And the algorithm should consist of sequential, conditional, and iterative procedures. So we need to make sure that we would have the proper loop and sequence in place. Then after we would lay out the pseudocode for the program, we would begin to write the program. And once you complete the program, you would assemble it. You would take screen captures of the editor, the simulator, and the program output on console. Then I want you to test the program using key 0 through 6. And I need you to give me a screen capture of the program showing when you key in input 0, 4, 5, and 6. Then C and D, you need to describe how you debug this program in the case that you need to debug it to fix it. And what kind of challenges you come across in creating this program. So when you read the instruction, are you able to grasp it and how would you approach it? So after number one, you would use number one as an example. And you would need to create a second program that would take input from 0 through 11. And as the user input 0, that will represent the month of the year, which is January. And if the user input 1, that will be February and so on. So when the user input 11, it will show December. So uh, a lot of the components in the example in the exercise 2 is going to be similar to exercise 1. However, in exercise 1, you only have 0 through 6. But in exercise 2, you are required to do 0 through 11. So how can you get the program to record two input, two number, two digits from 10 to 11? Okay, so think about that and how you would implement it. And so look at the program, what it's requiring, write an LC3 solution to output the month of the year based on the user input 0 through 11. Then I want to give you 
I want me you to give me screenshots. Now, if you don't get the program to work successfully, you still have to submit exercise to program. I want you to attempt it. Otherwise, you will not receive full credit. Now, if you get the program to work successfully, I will give you 30 points extra credit. But if you don't, you still have to write the program and try to figure out how you would be able to work through the program. If it doesn't work fully, that's okay, but at least you attempt. So just like exercise one, I want you to give me screen captures to test 0, 1, 8, and 11. Describe how you built the program and how you fixed that program and what kind of challenges you have. So make sure you answer these questions in exercise one and two. Once you have your screen capture and the answers, you will need to submit the lab. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the program for exercise one. Okay. So now if we look at the program, we would start with putting down some of the procedures that we need for the program. So the first thing that we need is the program is going to prompt the user to input 0 through 6. That's the first step. So at the start of the program, we know that we need to implement this procedure. And then in that, we would then set up the string to prompt enter number 0 through 6. And we want to set up the string with the label days, which hold the array of the days of the week. And we wanted to load the string label to prompt in the console. And in this load, we would use load effective address. So what I'm doing is I'm laying out the steps so that way it helps me write out the program. And when you put it into pseudocode, it's a little bit easier to, to see what you're missing and what you need to add. The second step is we are going to record the second process is we are going to record the user input. And we would be able to record the user input. And in this case, we're using get C. We would store that input into the register once the user has entered a value. Then we would take that value and we would calculate the ASCII offset with the decimal 48 at 0 ASCII. So we need to refer to ASCII table to look at that offset. So here is where we would subtract that 48 to get the ASCII offset. Then next, we're going to have input validation. Any number above 6, the program would exit. So we would then need to branch for any number that is larger than 6. So we need to think about how we would be able to branch. If we do subtraction, if it's larger than 6, so if it's 7, then it would give us a positive value. So we can check for positive and branch for positive there. So we need to check with the subtraction of 6. Now, for the next step, we would have the display of the string for any input between 0 to 6. The iteration for the branch, we need to implement the loop. So that will be iterative branching to access the days array. Then we would initialize the starting point in that step where it would be able to access the first character of the first day. And it would update the value. Then it's going to show string in the console. So as you can see, as I write down the step, I would break it down to the subset so that way I know 
what I need to put in when I program that section. Then we want to get the program to return to the beginning. So we need to branch it back to the beginning label for the prop. So looking at the steps in the program, then we can start doing the exercise in LC3. So I need, and it's a good habit to kind of lay out all the processes, especially for more complex programs. So you can list the sub step and be able to start approaching the program. So here's my program. At the beginning, I have the comments. Then next, I have the origination address. So we're going to originate at hex 3000. I'm going to use a label called restart. And this label is going to be specifically for prompting the user to enter number 0 through 6. So at this label, I'm going to do a load effective address, so LEA R0 prompt. And prompt simply is another label that we are going to put, we're going to fill the strings in. We're going to add the strings for prompt. So here at this line, I prompt to the console, enter the number 0 through 6. Then we want to put that string to show that string on console. So this takes care of step one. Step two, we are going to record the input from the user that we would use get C. So that would be character input. And we wanted to copy the input from register 0 and put it onto register 3. We want to move it out of register 0 and free up the register 0. Then we are going to use, we are going to subtract 48 for to convert the input ASCII input to actual value. So these next three lines allow us to do the conversion. So when we have the first subtraction that will be offset at 16, Next, that will be offset at 32, and lastly, that will be offset at 48. So the three lines allow us to do the conversion for the offset. Then next, we are going to do input validation. And we wanted to make sure that the user is going to input numbers between 0 through 6. So since register 3 has the input, then we are going to add register 3 with negative 6 and store the result in register 4. So this is for input validation. Now, if it is positive, it's going to go to the error label because if they enter a number 7, 7 minus 6 is going to give you a positive number that's going to go into the error section or the error label. Then we are going to load effective address for days. So we are going to show the days of the week. And here is where we need to add the 0 to register 3. So that way we would set up 0 for branching to initialize the loop at the 0. So this is like how we would do int i is equal to 0 at, for the beginning of our loop. So here is where we initialize that at 0. Now. 
Next, in the loop section, this is when we are going to loop. We're going to branch to zero, and when it get if when it checks for zero in register three, if if it finds zero, then it's going to go into the display where it's going to show the day. Now, in order to do the loop ten times. We would then need to add the 10 to register 0. That would be for 10 characters for the days including the null terminated. Because Wednesday has the most character that will be 9. So we wanted to have a null terminated character that would be 10. So here is where we add the 10. And we want to update the loop by subtracting 1 from register 3. And we would force it to go back to loop again by doing an unconditional BR. So we would branch it back to loop. And as it goes, it's going to count down. So it would then put. Now, after that, we would have a load effective address to show LF string. And for the LF string, that simply is going to be fill at A, which is 10. So when we have it load LF to R0, LF hold the days as string. That will be 10 position. And then it's going to put that on screen. So why are we using A or 10? That is because for our string contains 10, 10 characters. Then after it finished, this is an infinitely loop program. So it's going to come back. We're going to have it branch back to the beginning again. So it will continue to ask the user to input the number. Earlier, we have branch to error for positive. So in the case where if, if, it, if the program checks for the input, if the input is higher than 6, the program is going to stop. It's going to halt. So now we would get to the section where we would have the prompt. And we would do the fill. So prompt is going to have the string to prompt to the user. So make sure we do dot strings. Please enter number 0 through 6. For the days, we would have Sunday. And make sure that we line them up accordingly. It needs to be aligned correctly. And the ending quotations needs to be aligned correctly as well. Okay, so if you don't have the proper 10 spaces, you're going to run into issues. Okay, so we're going to fill strings mon Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And lastly, we would have the strings invalid input. And we can have this display when the user input incorrectly. Then for the LF, we're going to fill it at hex A. And that is for our 10 characters. And at the end, we would have a dot N. And I did put an image of this program from LC3 Editor onto your lab page. So you should be able to view it there if you want a closer look at the program. And you can comment accordingly. So after I have set up my code, then I can go in and I'm going to go ahead and click Translate, Assemble. So if you don't receive any error, that's good. 
we're good to go. Then we are going to go into our simulator. And we are going to go ahead and click File, Load Program. We're going to find the program that we saved and assemble. And then we are going to click Run. So in this one, you need to look at the console. So here is the console. I'm going to go ahead and test it with the number 4. It shows Thursday. A number 6. A number three, a number zero. And it will continue to ask because it, it's infinitely looping. We branch it back to the restart. So there was no condition that it would be false. So it's just going to keep going. Now, if you want to stop the program, you simply click the green arrow with the red X to stop it. Now let's say if we run the program again, let's do let's load the program again. And then we can test it for input validation. So let's do eight and it ends the program. We can do a better job with for this one you can have it put in invalid input so i can simply go in here and in the error with the halt before the halt i would have it i can edit this to make it where it would load that string so we can do an lea R0 I'm going to go ahead and refill this so we can fill it as error message so we would then load error message input is invalid so when we do that then we simply do a put so and so when we the way that I had it previously I didn't have I just have it stop but we can change it real quick and make it show um, error message there. Okay. So now when after we as we saved it, we're gonna go ahead and assemble. Make sure that there's no error, and then you can just reload the program. And then run the program. So on this, I wanted to, again, test for 4. And then for the 9, I put in 9, and now it does show invalid input. So when I corrected the program, I wanted to make sure that I have the proper label in there. And then to show the invalid input. So that would conclude our program. And in this program, we take the user input between 0 through 6. And we would convert the input to display the day of the week. And note that make sure that we align the quotation in the same position for each line. And same thing with this one. And then the spaces, make sure that you count out and it should be a total of 10. Okay, otherwise you're going to run into a problem. If you have any questions, please make sure you contact me. And again, there is no live Zoom for the lab this week, but you'll be able, we will be able to resume the following Tuesday.
See you Tuesday.